Alright. Hi guys. Welcome to my channel. That's what my daughter always says. Uh, today I want to talk about my uh, DIY pull controller. So, um, I, uh, the reason I did this is because I just wanted to be able to, you know, automate some stuff and uh, also control it from um, a, an iPhone. As you can see, there's a lot of rocks and they really hurt um, when you come back here. So, um, this way, you know, when you're in the pool with no, no shoes on, right, that sucks. So, this way I can just pick up my phone and, and control things. So, let me go ahead and pop it open and uh, show you all about it. Um, so, this is where I started, actually. Let me show you that first. That's a, 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 a Intermatic. Uh, it's got the timer with the very very manual well i mean it's a little automated right it's got these these things that turn on turn your uh pull pump on and off uh pull light switches down here uh and then there's circuit breakers so i tried to make it the same um so in addition to being a uh a pool controller it's also my load center right so that's why you have these these circuit breakers in here um so let i'll start at the beginning this is an altelix case it's uh, like a fiberglass, so it's RF neutral, which is good because this is my Raspberry Pi and it's actually connected uh, via Wi-Fi. So um, let's see, I have 60 amp service coming in here. So you'll see down here, there's these two rails. It's 240 volt, right? So there's load one and load two. Um, and these come in from, you know, from a run over here. My basement back there goes underground and pops up here. Uh, load one, load two, have a common, and then also a ground um, that comes from the, the panel in my basement. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, yeah, so Raspberry Pi, it's running Node Red. Um, it's got a Sequient Microsystems uh, hat on there. It's an eight relay hat. You can actually stack them, which is really cool. Um, but I just have the eight right now. There's actually an, another hat that I, I started with. Uh, it's called a Mega IO. And in addition to the eight relays, it also has, a, I, I think it's like eight uh, analog to digital converters, um, which is useful for stuff like this, right? The pressure gauge. So I have a, a transducer um, on my filter pump and that, that goes into this wire and in here and it, it hooks in there. Um, unfortunately it broke. Uh, I had a, a power surge and it fried that board. So I've got another one on uh, coming in. They're like 22 bucks, so it's, it's really cheap. Um, anyway, I use the ADCs. You can use the ADCs for things like uh, temperature or in my case, pressure. It spits out a voltage and, and you can just kind of do a little math to make it, you know, convert that into PSI or into temperature or into, uh, oh, uh, current, right? So they have these little hall sensors um, I don't have them there. I haven't, I took them out when the board fried, but they go around the hot leg and they will, um, they'll tell you how much current is running through that line. And that gets plugged into here and, and, uh, shows you that as well. So, uh, let's see. Um, what else? Oh, you'll notice that mine's probably a little different than most of the ones you've seen, right? In that it's a uh, DIN rail. Um, I just thought it looked cool. So figured I would I would do the project with this versus something a little more traditional right terminal blocks and and screwing things on the board this is a real nice way to get everything mounted all this stuff just snaps right onto that rail um, and and so it, it allows you to lay things out really clean if I had to do it all over again I would probably uh, use they make a, a din rail relays that are a little bit they're a lot thinner um, and they make, I probably wouldn't have done the circuit breakers again. I probably would have done like a, uh, they make a terminal block that, that just has a, a button on it. It's still a circuit breaker, but it's not as big and beefy as these are. Um, that really kind of took a lot of space, but I, I managed to squeeze everything in here. Uh, let's see, my, my inputs come, come in down here. Um, and this is, you know, same as it, it's, it's like for like, right? That, that was the Intermatic. So these are the same things. I just, I uh, made a little mock-up of where the holes were and, and just matched it, drilled them out. Um, so how it works is node red. Uh, 
is, is wired into these relays and I use these relays to control um, the bigger relays. And this is where I actually run my, uh, my, my mains voltage through. These, are, these take 24 volts from here, 24 volts AC, and that's what I switch. And these are 24 volt coils. So I use the 24 volts from here to turn these guys on and off. Um, one of the other cool things about Node Red is it gives it, it, it makes a uh, there's a dashboard plugin. Um, so as you drag uh, icons onto the board, it uh, or nodes I guess onto the board, it will um, it will add them to a web page, and that's actually how I how I control it. So uh, let's see, yeah, that's what the 24 volt AC transformers for. I, the reason I went with 24 volts AC is because um, actuators that control that you can mount on the valves there. Um, they're native 24 volt AC. So I was trying to keep the amount of different power supplies and things that I would, um, that I had in here to, to a minimum. So when I buy those, they're going to come in here and, uh, you know, hook to a relay and I'll be able to control, uh, those as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, let's see what else. Okay. So that's the power supply for the Raspberry Pi. It's a five volt, um, uh, 10 amp. Uh, yeah, five volt, 10 amp board. That's that's more power than this needs, but um, this is this needs a five volt, or excuse me, five amp um, power supply. And I just figured there's extra, you can pull more power off it. If I ever needed five volts in the system for anything else, I'd have some headroom there. So that's why I did that. Um, this is a 24 volt uh, power supply. And this actually goes to a Stenner Econ T pump. Um, it, it pumps my chlorine into the pool, you know, at 9 p.m. and 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 uh, also I do it once in the morning, um, just to kind of give a base load. I've got a I got a chlorine tank down there. You can see it's the blue thing, and actually there's the stinger pump mounted right there. Um, and I just broke into one of my return lines and and feed it in there. Uh, it's not really integrated here. The Econ T is a, has a timer on board. I bought that before I I decided I was going to do all this. Um, so it's got its own timer, but it, it does operate on, uh, DC. I pulled the, there's a big transformer that, you know, plugs into a wall work, right? That plugs into the wall. Um, I pulled that off. It actually is made to come off and, and read the side where it said it's 24 volts. So that's why I'm powering that with there. Um, here, I'll show you the interface. Uh, all right. All right, and uh, oh, also, let me just go over what these are. So that's the circuit breaker for um, for the pump. It's a 20 amps uh, circuit breaker. I don't need 20 amps, but I'm gonna buy an IntelliFlow at some point. Uh, that feeds this relay and then goes down to the wires for the pump. This one is for the spa blower. And, um, oh, and uh, that goes to that relay. This is the heater. The heater actually only uses two amps. So I just got a 10 amp uh, circuit breaker. Um, that doesn't go to a relay because my heater is always on and I can control it actually down here. It's got, uh, if you throw the relays in a specific configuration, um, it'll switch between pool and spa. And then I just have it hard coded on the heater. Uh, this is the circuit breaker for the, the what I call the logic area. Um, this is the circuit breaker for the, that goes down to this relay for, I don't think I have anything on there. Yeah, that one's empty. Um, and that circuit breaker feeds my, uh, newest addition, which is the, um, dolphin goes to the dolphin comes up here. And then, uh, so I have the dolphin on a relay as well. How that works is, uh, the, you can put it in something called the automation mode. So anytime it gets powered on it just starts running. So I just leave it in the pool and, and I have a relay here and I, I can flip it on as needed. So here's my interface. And as you can see, I just, I, it's a web page, but I, I bookmarked it and saved it on the home page. Uh, so if we go in there, that is the interface. Uh, so pump, blower, I can control all these things here. Let me, let me hit a button, right? that kicks on my my pump I'll turn it off so we can hear oh one of the other cool things about these relays is if I hit this button I can manually override it just to test things 
Um, so yeah, and then heat spa. These basically all just control relays that that do stuff. Turn off turn off my lights. It's daytime. Um, this one's cool. Pool spa or off. That's how I control the heat on my pool. Uh, and then I have modes. So when I hit spa, it will turn on the pump, the blower. Eventually, it'll turn the actuators uh, on my valves so that they're in the correct configuration for spa. Um, but I still have yet to buy that. Maybe next season I'll, I'll add that on. Um, and let's see. And then there's menus. I got my diagnostics so I can see, you know, all the, uh, the status of anything if I'm out and about. And then lights. My lights are LED lights, and they're controlled by uh, turning them on and off a specific amount of times. You have 20 programs, so like if I wanted to do uh, deep blue sea on my lights, I would flip them off and then turn them on and then off again and then on. So on off twice, right? And that's that would take me to the second program or third program if I flip it three times, etc. You get the idea. Um, I built that logic into Node Red, so it just runs a little loop when I pick one of these, and it'll it'll set the lights for me. I can do the uh, pool, I can do the spa, or I can do both, um, and and they're perfectly synchronized. It's actually pretty cool. Um, Trying to think of what else. Uh, probably not a whole lot else. Oh, some things I will point out. Um, anytime you run a relay on an inductive load like a motor. You want to have uh, these things. So when the motor kicks off, it, it creates kind of a back current, which can fry these relays. This is called a MOV transistor, metal oxide varistor, I think. Uh, and what that does is it protects the relay and the rest of the system when you turn off your pool pump. Uh, you can also do it with a, a Zener diode. Um, hang on, sweetie, I'm, I'm recording a YouTube. Uh, you can also do it with a Zener diode, but these are better uh, for inductive loads. Zener diodes are better for, uh, I don't know, some other kind of load. Uh oh So, um, yeah, that, that's really it. The blower also has one. And these do die, but they're like 20 cents. So, um, you know, you buy a five pack for like four bucks. I guess that's not 20 cents, but um, let's see. That's it. I'm trying to think of what else. Yeah, I don't know. If you have any questions, put them in the in the comments. And uh, thanks for watching.